Okay, today we're going to be looking at a best of three from the Paris Major 2023 RMR Closed Qualifier Group A. This is going to be Astralis versus Saw, and the winner of this would qualify for the Blast RMR. And today, it's the best of three. We're going to be looking at map two, which was Vertigo, and Saw actually won this map 19-17, to 17, although Astralis did win the best of three. We're going to be looking at the point of view of Just, because I've never watched him before, and I'm actually curious. I want to watch some of these newer players. In this game, he went 32-21. and 21. He had 97.1 ADR, 72.2% cast, and 1.35 HLTV or 1.35 rating 2.0. So we are going to hop right into this game, and I'm actually very curious to see how he performs and how he plays this game. They're going to be starting here on the T side. So let's see how this game goes. Let's see their strat here. I'm actually very interested in this game. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit here. Looks like they're going for an A strat here. Looks like they're making, they're making no fake. They're just hard going out A. Clearing side hall. Nice flash in from Astralis to clean them up. They're gonna get the trade back, but that's a very nice pop flash from Astralis. They were more than ready for that hit. Okay, they are going towards B. They're gonna be on a force fight here. They're gonna pop Molly over. Ooh, Glaive actually goes for the peak there. They're gonna line up a deep Molly and a deep flash. Then we're gonna follow up with another one. They're actually cleaning up these B-side players. A nice headshot from Just. He's going to clean up Device, hiding behind this pillar. And that is going to be the round. Very nice fast B-play there. I've actually never seen that Molly. He's going to follow it up with a close smoke. Ooh, he just saw that player. A little bit dangerous there, but he's going to duck on out of there. Looks like he's tucking in to hold the flank before deciding to go up after Blamef gets two of those kills. He gets traded by Story. Going to side hall, he's going to get the kill on Buzz. He's going to run out. He's not going to switch to the A1S, I think that was. Maybe it wasn't, but uh, he's not going to switch to that. And they're going to go ahead and... Story really extended for that kill. Maybe if Zipnex... Could have had the chance to kill both of them there. Maybe a little bit of a mistake from him, but they don't get punished for it. But he definitely overextended on that bomb playing, with it, especially with his teammate right there. I actually like this smoke. It's kind of like a one-way lurky smoke. I might start using this some rounds in my game. Just going to be phasing here a little bit. You got this dip next howl. Here he's going to re-clear this ramp, make sure all the is clear. He's going to get a nice kill on the buzz. He's going to go ahead and clear up sight, he just saw... He's going to follow that up with a nade. No pick this round is as good as gone. Ooh, he's actually gonna get the flank kill on device holding the exit. That's actually insane awareness there from him. And he's gonna get the kill on the zip neck as well. This guy this guy is this guy's feeling it, man. He's he's aware of all this stuff. It's a very nice exit getting both the kills there. That's actually insane. Go ahead and Molly and Nade into ramp there. Try to spray anything that has jumping up. It's one of the cool things with the A4, you can do all the spraying at once. Looks like they're gonna go for a boost here. Pop up on that flash. A little worried on the one way, but he gets a close kill on Zipnex before getting traded by Buzz. 
fairly good performance so far. A little bit of a weird jiggle for my taste. I feel like if they drop that, they'll see your first jiggle and then you won't have time to react and they can kill you on the second jiggle. I feel like you should jiggle it more methodically, more slowly. And he's gonna get shut down by Glaive on the A ramp. See what happens here. Go for the wall bang. So it looks like he's just a little lurky kind of player. He's gonna be lurking all the smokes B. He seems to just be like the the rifler. He's gonna get the kill on the buzz there. Ooh, here's this player close CT. This little hole towards the bottom actually gives you a little bit of an advantage on this fight to be ready for this guy a little bit. But he is gonna go for the extend here. Glaive is gonna get the kill on Roman. He's gonna be doing this hard flank here. Trying to catch anybody on the bar. He's actually gonna get Zipnix. There's actually a fairly good off angle from Zipnix. I'm surprised that he won this fight. Very nice kill from him. And it looks like he's going to get shut down on the rotate. The next round. We got fast play here, but they get mollied off. And another molly coming in. They're going to go ahead and molly headshot. Looks like they're trying to boost this to somebody here. Ooh, a little bit of a weird play going on here. I'm a little bit of missed movement as well. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this right now. I think they should cancel. I think that's the right call to make there. I think they, they overstayed their welcome. But they see that and and they they adjust. And they're gonna kill my buzz here close, and he's actually gonna clean up two of them. He runs the next round. Looks like he only has a deagle here. Throwing that smoke a little bit deep for not fighting that. They're I feel like they're gonna know that that's a that that's just a fake smoke. Pretty early. He's gonna go out here, baiting some noise. He's actually not gonna clear any angles. He's gonna rotate, and Glaive is gonna get the double nade kill. He's gonna work up here. Let's see if he can get, actually get this AK. Looks like he can. And he's gonna try to clear up here. Let's see if he can get anything done. He sees one half. Goes for the headshot. I don't know why it's not showing the crosshair on his gun. It's kind of weird. But I assure you, he does have one. I don't. It's showing up on the knife, but not the gun. It's very weird. Gonna clear this. Sightall, he's actually gonna get the kill on the zip next. Ooh, I like that play. I like the idea there. I actually really like that play. I like the idea of jumping up there, trying to get him on the headshot angle, and then you have the isolated 1v1 against the other guy. I actually really like that. I think that was a good play. That was a good little bit of try to get him with a little bit of aggression there. I really like that. Especially since it allows you to isolate both the fights. And these pistols are just going to get shut down here on the A ramp. Be surprised if they can make any kills here. Story's actually gonna get a kill. And he's gonna get shut down by device. So they lose one player there on the CT side. Not not the biggest hit, but at least you got something. Looks like we have a timer here. Wall bang spray. Actually very much like this monk. I think maybe he throws it a little bit too much, but he is alone, so not too bad. That's pretty bad. Pulling out his knife before he had crossed in the door 
and he obviously gets punished for that. That is exactly why I said I'm not a big fan of him throwing it that much, because it got so predictable with how he was playing. Buzz just killed him solely off of how predictable he was. Buzz never went aggressive like that, but he's like, this guy throws the smoke, and then he plays the angle, and then when it fades, he falls back, and he does the same thing, and it's kind of repetitive. So Buzz saw that, and he punishes him on it. I still think it's a strat that you can do sometimes, but maybe don't be so repetitive with it. Maybe sometimes push in under it and try to lurk around. Maybe sometimes play the far corner. Sometimes you can obviously play the one ways. Just gotta play it differently. Sometimes throw it and then just leave. Like, don't even be there. Maybe you can throw it and then go fast day with your team, or you can go ladder and lurk up mid. Something like that. He's playing a little bit different now, just lurking down here. Smoke's gonna pop up. forward a little bit here. Looks like he's ready to go out. He pulls out his butterfly a lot in weird situations. He's gonna get the kill on Buzz here. It's like his, he pulls out his butterfly to the point where like some situations it's, it's really bad that he's doing it. Like right there. If somebody just peeked him sight when he was pulling out his butterfly, he definitely would have died. Here's one mid. Not a fan of but it does work out. That is one aggression I'm not a fan of, so we're we're one for one right now. One aggression I like, one aggression I don't like. And the reason I don't like that is because jumping up there, if they're holding it, you're not gonna win that fight. It's just it's just an unwinnable fight. It's not worth the risk of going for it. But he was solely playing the 50-50 there. But like the if they're holding that, then you have a zero percent chance of winning the fight. And if they're holding CT and playing the timings, then you have like a 50% chance of winning it. So do you really want to play odds so that you have a 0% chance or a 50% chance? You should either play like 100% and 0% or 50-50. You shouldn't play like 0% and 50%. That's, that's too risky for my liking. Unless you're in, the, unless you're in a really uh, tough situation. Looks like he's going to pick up the op here. They're actually double op, so he's going to go ahead and throw that away. Now here they are on their pistol round. Let's see what they can get done here. Duelies on the CT side are very common on Vertigo. Because it can shred a lot of angles. Really good side haul, really good B lurk. I'm guessing he's going to be the B lurk here. Yep. He's going to go ahead and tuck in this corner. And they hear him. And he's going to get two kills here on the ramp. Teammates gonna fall back. This is why the dually shred. This is really good playing from them. Playing passive here, not overextending the eagles. Make this bank on them, and they're gonna kill him off the spray. So pistol round won by them. He's gonna go ahead and buy Fomas here. Flipping around his knife quite a bit. He's gonna go ahead and maul you that. Jump for info. Doesn't seem to see any. He sees the head there. It's actually an interesting jiggle I don't see too often. But it covers a lot of angles, so I understand why he does it. But it's just very uncommon. I never see that very much. Some people coming mid, but Roman and Sora gonna clean that up. He's got one ramp and one mid, trying not to get crossfired here. And his teammate's gonna clean up the mid guy so he can focus on the ramp, and he is gonna get that. Easy peasy. See what he does here. So he still goes B even off bad spawns, so they they're not playing spawns, they just play hard sites. Maybe we'll go for a little bit more of a play here sometime. It's a very interesting peak. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. You're like, you're really close to the wall. I feel like with how often he does it, I know it's just early game, but how often he does it, I feel like it, it's very punishable. I feel like they could easily nade that or they can easily get the headshot on that peak angle. 
but he's gonna play back here and get that kill. He's gonna go ahead and molly sandbags, and he's gonna jump up here. Very nice peek onto that player, very aware. He's gonna switch to the A1S, try to extend there, and he is going to get shut down. So he is going to be playing a little a -lurk with the CZ here, coming mid with his teammate, and he's actually going to die to that boost. Go ahead and head on into the next round. They're going to have a full buy here, and it looks like he's going to be back at the B site. Let's, be, let's see if he plays with a little bit of variation this round. His last two rifle rounds, he's done basically the same thing, thrown that molly, gone for the jiggle peek, and then playing killer. Yep, same thing he's doing. He's playing a little more aggressive this round. Holding for this jump up. Going for the spam. Then he nades it, flashes high. Checking for the jump up. So he is playing with a little bit of variation here. Not being too predictable. He's gonna get wide off. He's actually gonna get the dink on that player. You can see the blood splats there. I think he got a dink on a player and two shots on someone else, so significant damage here. Now he's just holding for the boost up. He's got one close. It's gonna be Buzz that he kills before he ends up rotating over here. Really low time, all they really gotta do is buy for time here, and it doesn't even look like the T's are going for it. Let's see what he does here. I want a little ramp progression. I, I think they're going to give it this round with the op spawn. That's exactly what I want to see. But it looks like they don't bite. And he's going to go back to doing this jiggle peek. And again, I don't hate this Jiggle Peak, I just feel like he does it too much. Now, three out of four rifle rounds, he's done this Jiggle Peak. And the only round he didn't do it was when um, they were very aggressive on him early. So he had to kind of combat that. I think you should do this Jiggle Peak, but I think there's some other ones that you should incorporate as well. Because I feel like this can get very predictable. Life for sight. His team is actually shut down. Gonna go ahead and get that kill. Looks like he's gonna try to save the op and get out of there. So it doesn't look like anything else is gonna happen in that round. He's gonna get the save, but this round he's going mid. Looks like they're doing some boost setup. I'm not a big fan of jumping up here. I think playing underneath the bar to your left and playing the crossfire with somebody underneath you, I think that's a much better setup with much better reward. Trying to get a kill here, and they're going to get shut down. The enemy is going to throw this smoke. Let's see how he plays around it when I use against him. Ooh, he gets a knife kill on the buzz. Ooh, and he cleans up another. They might actually win the round off that. He's gonna give him the AK, probably has more HP. And he's gonna lurk up close sight. Probably has one sight haul. Ooh, I don't like how aggressive he got there. I actually wanna see how this round plays out. Let's see if they win it. It looks like they do. Yeah, they'd end up winning that round. That's actually pretty crazy. I think he got a little aggressive there at the end. I think playing that close sight with the AK, have the AK kind of take initial fight, and then the P250 can pop out on him. Here again, he's doing that same jiggle peek. And he's playing, he's played three angles so far. He's played here, holding for the jump up. He's played the jiggle peek, and he's played back pillar. To only play have, to only have three angles played, I mean, at least he's selecting pretty good angles to be playing. But only have three angles played, other than that one round he was B and went aggressive there and got the knife. Um, 
shows you that you really need to play pretty dynamic. I don't hate this though, because the three plays that he's doing are actually pretty good, and the one time he had an eco and went aggressive ramp to get that knife kill was actually huge impact, which shows you that you, you need to play, like, you need to have a set play style, but then sometimes you need to vary it up a little bit. So, like, 60% of the rounds, you can play your normal, his normal kind of jiggle peeking, mollying, falling back to pillar, playing that jump angle. But then 40% of the rounds, you can go mid, you can go for that lurk. I think he has a pretty good mixture. I think he leans a little bit too hard on the same strats for the rifle rounds. I think his rifle rounds, he needs to vary a little bit more. But I think when he incorporates ecos and force buys and stuff like that, I think he has a pretty good understanding of it. And I honestly, I don't hate the strats he's doing on knife rounds. I don't hate that jiggle peek. It's not like a horrible play. I don't hate playing that back pillar. It's not a horrible play. Like, I think he has a good selection of what he's doing. I think it's a good variation. And I think he plays it well, especially for being alone on B. I would just like him to maybe play around at double box, playing behind the double boxes on site, maybe play around playing around that. I would like to see something like that. I think he definitely has a, definitely has a good understanding of it, just not just not the best. It's not the best I've seen. But still very good. I think that was a very dangerous jiggle peek there with a the molly out at that angle. That's ooh, dangerous man. And he is going to get shut down. Go ahead and fast forward through this timeout. Looks like they're going mid here on an eco. This is where you should play. Look where his teammate is. That's where you should play. You shouldn't jump on box. Staying there is a much better play. aggressive here. Ooh, I think somebody's below him. But it looks like there is nobody below him. It looks like that guy just tucked his tail and ran away. He's gonna go ahead and lurk all the way through here. He's actually gonna get a kill on the lurk. Pick up the AK. Flashing high. Let's see if they can get anything done here. Ooh, they weren't watching side hall and they get punished for it. And Glaive is gonna clean up that round. Here we have B. Another round doing the struggle peak. Ooh, falls back a little bit here. I want to see a round where he plays behind these double boxes here. I think that's one thing he can incorporate some rounds that, that would really that would really help him vary. Oh, he's doing it this round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I want to see. Okay. I like what I see now. Some rounds you need to incorporate a little bit more variety. This is what I was waiting for him to add something like this. And then lurk up late. Yep, this is good. This is good. You need to incorporate a little variety like that sometimes, so you're not so predictable. So you don't eat that innate damage close if they go there. So you don't, so you don't take the deep molly if they if they molly deep. I can get this first kill, and he's gonna get shut down by butts. I think that was really good for him to play behind double sec there. That is what I was waiting for. I think now, now that I see that, I think he has a really good variation of play style. That's what I like to see. He has good lineups, checking close. Here he is playing it again. So he does have a good variation. He just he just plays them more more in a row. He plays more. He does the strat like multiple buy rounds in a row. He'll do something and then he'll do next round. He'll do it multiple times in a row. And he'll throw in a little bit of variation here and there. Like he'll go close three rounds. And then he'll do that jiggle three rounds. And then he'll play this pillar three rounds. And then sometimes he'll mix it up and maybe play close two rounds and then play pillar. And then for three rounds, play double boxes. I think that's actually a good variation now that I actually have seen this full game. I think, I think he has a pretty good understanding of it. I would just like to see a little bit more of that variation early on. 
playing here again. And he's gonna get shut down by Buzz this time because he had played that angle before. I think that's an angle you can only get away with once a game. I don't think he should have gone back there, but that's just me. Molly close, he's gonna play this close angle again. He's gonna get mollied off and go to double boxes. He's gonna kill that player on the jump up. That's why I like playing double boxes. Because you can see the jump up and they're not really going to lurk up and you can jiggle the lurk up anyway. Which is what I think he was lacking. But now he's now he's done it three rounds in a row here. Three or four rounds in a row. On rifle rounds. Which I think is I think is really good. I think it's what he needed. And it's definitely working out for them. He's going to get this drop. Good offense for the lurk. He's going to drop the smoke and then lurk through it. It's very nice save here. They're going to have shut down that economy very well. Let's see what he does here. Ooh, he's going for a little bit of aggression. Okay. Flash this time. Going for a little bit of a spam. And he's gonna play here close again. He's gonna go Jenny, and they're playing mid. He's actually gonna go aggressive. Looks like he wants to go aggressive on this mid jump up, but he's worried about the flank. See if he can get anything done. Here's on a little bit of a lurk here. Doesn't seem to be anybody mid. He's gonna get the flank on the player lurking up B. And Story is going to kill Buzz. So here we are. Probably the last round of the half. Or probably the last round of the game, I mean. Going a little bit more aggressive here. Doesn't see anything. He's coming back. For a little jiggle, plays that angle for the cross. Here's him running back to B. Who's actually gonna try to cross the headshot and he's gonna get away with it. Story is gonna kill device. For this teammate here, but he's holding. Up. He's gonna double flash himself in. And Roman is gonna get the final two kills, and that is going to close the game. So, as you can see by the scoreboard here, just ended 29 and 19. Actually, this isn't the last round of the game, sorry. And this first side of OT, he's 29 and 19. But we're gonna see how he does in the second half here. Let's see if he varies his style up a little bit more. Got a little mixed up without seeing the without seeing the radar and without seeing the the sidebars. Especially for how much OTs this game has. This is going to be the last OT. He's playing the setup again, throwing that smoke, and then he throws the deep molly, playing as a solo player. I think he can... I think his, his CT side, now that I've seen the full game, his CT side variation is very good. But I think he needs to vary a little bit more on his T side. It's a little bit predictable. They're going to get the entry here on ramp, but Gleave is going to trade back to two. Gonna go for the wall bang. Looks like he's worried about the flank here. He's gonna clear that. Now he's in a, a 1v2 or 3, I believe. And he's going to get shut down. I wanna see a fast aggressive B round here from them. I know it's not everyone's play style, but I think it's something that they they haven't really done. I think it could really help them. But Just is gonna get the kill on Buzz, playing aggressive through that smoke. He varied his playstyle a lot here, and you can see just varied his playstyle. He was playing passive on the T side the entire game. Now he finally went aggressive, and Buzz was being aggressive in the smoke, thinking that he would be playing really passive, and Buzz gets punished for it. That's why you need to vary your playstyle. I think he he's there on the CT side, and I think he's almost there on the T side. He just needs a little bit more variety, but I think he's I think he's he's got it down really well. Got his players down mid. Phase of smoke, walk right in the enemy. He's gonna get shut down by device. I actually like that play. I think that's what you should do there. Phase of smoke. And now that is the last round of the game.
So very good game, very interesting to watch. I think he's a very good player. He has very good variation on his CT side now that I've seen the full game. But I still think his T side needs a little bit of work. He should maybe try to lurk under that smoke some rounds, have his teammate flash for him. Maybe something like that, but they played a really, really hard set, only one person B. I don't hate that because usually you want to fight three ramp, you have one maybe lurk mid, maybe you have a fourth guy ramp, maybe you have some B sometimes. I think they could have maybe played two B a little bit more. Um, I don't like, he was basically solo B the entire game. They never went for a fast B play from what I remember. Um, I'm talking about rifle rounds. They probably went for some on pistol rounds, or I remember early on on their four spies with the MAC-10 and Galil. I remember they went fast B some rounds, but I think on some rifle rounds, you should vary it a little bit. Maybe have somebody be with him B early, maybe help flash him in a little bit, something like that. I think that would be very nice. So anyway, I hope you guys watched this game and enjoyed it just like I did, and I'll see you guys next time.